Okay, everybody, um, I'm gonna go over how to replace an armature bar to put one of these new version six armature bars on either your V4 or V5, and hopefully not having to replace it on the V6. Um, I've had some issues with, with the bars either breaking or bending a lot. So if you ever break the bar, this one's gonna be a lot easier to replace. It's a little bit more dummy proof. So first you're gonna loosen up to take the old one off. Very carefully take these bearing or take these screws off of here. Make sure your screwdriver fits well so you don't strip out your the heads of your screws. Now, one of the important things is, is you don't want these bearings to come out. Um, you may have to kind of wiggle them, but if they do come out, no big deal. Just leave that little washer on the bearing. It's very important that that washer stays on that bearing. Okay. So we did that. Now, don't force this. Like it's sometimes it's kind of a little tricky. There's it's kind of a tight fit here. So just just very gently, you know, just don't force it. It's it's kind of easy to jerk this thing out and twist your spring or or scratch up, um, bend your springs up. These springs here on the on the frame. So if you notice how I just kind of gently just kind of moved it out, so I didn't I didn't twist anything up. Um, when you replace your springs on your on your old machine to put them on the new armature bar, it's important that this little backer spring, this this what I'm calling the backer spring is this spring, is this spring right here, is this little short one. It's just a just a su support spring. And I started bending, just putting a little tiny bend. You can see I put a little bend right there on the spring, and that's just gonna prevent it from making a stress point uh, and defeating the purpose of having a support spring. So that make sure that when you replace these springs that you put that that little bend going outwards. And also it's good practice to have the dished side of your washer. Each washer has a sharper side and a dished out side. And it's important that you have the more rounded side facing the spring so you don't create a sharp point on that. On these armature bars, it's not as big of a deal because this backer spring um, prevents a lot of the spring break breakage. Now here's the compression spring underneath. Um, you don't want to lose that either. So putting it on again, you, I, put the, I like to put the compression spring on the actual armature bar and I'm just going to gently put it in and just make sure your sp compression spring is lined up. And it's just, like I said, it's a really tight fit, especially especially if, um, if it's a powder coated frame because sometimes the powder go gets in the way. So I just kind of, I got that in there. I didn't have to force it. I, you know, don't, don't be silly with um, trying to force anything. Now, pop your bearings back in, making sure you have the little shim washer on them. So I'll hold the bearing down. Take your screw, make sure you have a washer on these screws. If you don't, your screws will be too long and it won't clamp the armature bar down properly. So I'm just putting them on. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way until I get both of them on. And you kind of have to kind of push down on that bar just a little. Um, as far as tightening, you don't need, don't, don't wrench these down really hard. I, I usually, once it's snug, just a little turn past snug, just like maybe a quarter turn, if even that. You can kind of, just kind of tell like when it's seated, but if it, you know, little screws like this, when people try, it's not like a coil machine with giant screws on it. So you can't just wrench them down as hard as you can. Um, one thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to adjust the impact screw. You may get lucky when it comes out and, and maybe it's already adjusted. Um, but typically I have it when I send these out that the that the impact screw is backed out quite a bit. The beautiful thing with these new armature bars is these O-rings are gonna hit in a place where the, you're gonna have at least enough impact to make the machine run right. And you've probably already seen the tuning videos for this, but I'm just gonna go over that one more time. I'm not gonna go through the detail of setting it up or nothing. But you will need to tune the machine. If you have a version five, it's gonna have a cam with a line on it, but you don't have a range. You just kind of have it on the higher side 
Um, see, this is on the version six, so I have two little lines on there. So with these O-rings, you kind of can disregard a, a little bit of that. You just don't want to have your lines. Um, you don't want the line on the cam to be ahead of that line on the the, the more forward. If it has only one line, you don't want the line on the cam to be above that uh, key. So... Um, it could be a little bit below, but you don't want to go above because you could break your pivot spring. So if you did not change your stroke from, from getting the machine um, replaced, all you should have to do is set your impact screw again. Always load the machine when you retune it, otherwise you're not going to get a good reading. It's not going to tune right. Okay, at 5 volts, you can hear it's not... It's not hitting on the impact screw. And to me, I really think it's important to have the sharpness of the impact screw. For other people, you could, I mean, you may line different than me. So I'm just gonna barely just keep turning this in, just like a sixteenth of a turn. And I can actually see the screw before it touches the, the frame. And so I'm getting close. Right there. Now it's hitting. The impact screw is hitting. You can back this off, but sometimes I may turn it to 5.5 volts and then start backing it off until where it got a little bit duller. It's still hitting on that screw, but ideally you kind of want the O-rings to work in your advantage to kind of dampen the sound and dampen everything just a little bit and then still have it to where the impact screw is just barely hitting. That's going to make it to where... That's gonna make it to where your impact screw won't wear out as fast or won't won't settle into the frame as fast. And you're also not putting a ton of strain on the O-rings. So they kind of work together to make each other last longer and stay in tune longer. Um, nice thing with these O-rings too, is if it goes out of tune, you'll know because the machine just got a lot quieter. And so you just can just do a very, very slight turn until you hear that impact at the desired voltage that you like to run the machine. All right. I think I covered it. Thanks for watching.